I decided to get back into making tutorials just to see if it's something I still wanted to do. And what I have for you today is what will hopefully be uh, the most comprehensive weight painting guide available for beginners. Uh, so let's get started. So let's start with what is weight painting. Uh, weight painting can do a lot of things, but what you're probably here for is uh, weight painting in the context of rigging. Um, I'll go over some other uses for weight painting later on. Um, but for our purposes, weight painting is assigning vertices to a group, and that group will move with the bone. So vertices can be assigned a weight value from 0 to 1. So if I pop into weight paint mode really quick, you'll see there is this heat map that shows up. Um, and this heat map represents values from 0 to 1. So areas in red will move are 100% part of this group. Areas in this dark blue color are 0% part of this group. Meaning, when I move the bone, areas in red will be moved 100% of the way with this bone, whereas areas in blue will not be moved at all. So let's say we want to weight paint this character. We want the different body parts of the character to move with the armature. Uh, by default, you'll see, it does not do that. So we need to do a couple of things. So for an armature to deform a mesh, the mesh needs two things. One, uh, the mesh has to be parented to the armature. It has to be a child of the armature. And number two, the names of the vertex groups must match the names of the bones. So what I mean by that is when we move this bone right here, right arm bone, it's going to be looking for a vertex group named right arm to move with it. Fortunately for us, we don't have to create every single vertex group on our own and name it like right arm, left arm, whatever. When we do the first step, when we parent the mesh to the armature, it will create all of those groups for us. So let's parent the mesh to the armature specifically for weight painting. So all of these vertex groups will be automatically created. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to left click, select the mesh. It's got that outline. Shift, left click to select the armature. It's very important you do it in that order. Then we're going to hit Control P and we'll have the little parenting menu come up. And what we want is to set parent to armature to form with empty groups. And you'll see if I click that and then I go back over to our mesh, it's created all of these vertex groups for us where we can easily start weight painting in. You'll also notice now that the mesh is a child of the armature, its position in the hierarchy over here changed. So before it was not a child of the armature, but now after we've parented it, it is a child of the armature. So when we move our bones, um, the mesh still does not move with the armature, and that's because we actually haven't started weight painting yet. So let's do that now. So let's actually start weight painting. Uh, to start weight painting, we need to go into weight painting mode, which isn't here. And that's because weight painting mode only appears when we have our objects for weight painting selected in the correct order. This time it's going to be the opposite selection order. So let's select the armature then shift click and select the mesh and you'll notice now we have the option to enter weight paint mode so i'm going to do that now so you'll notice everything in your mesh is now blue and that's because there are no weights anywhere nothing is weight painted so let's actually start doing that so you've got a couple different tools at your disposal you have the draw brush which just lets you paint on and you'll notice it starts to move with that bone there. You've got the blur brush, which will let you smooth out and blur some of those weights. The average, which is similar to blur, but it just averages the area. Like that. And then smear or smudge, and it lets you push around the weights. You also have the gradient tool, which has some subsettings. Uh, it's got a linear gradient mode, so I can drag in a line to weight paint or I can drag in a radial in the circle to make a radial gradient. So you'll notice when we use all of these tools it's actually adding weights to the mesh. It's not taking them away or mixing them and that's for a couple of reasons. 
uh, one when we open up more details on our current tool so like the brush tool for example I'm gonna hit N to open up this little side menu and go to tool you'll notice the blend mode is currently set to mix and what that mix blend mode does is it tries to get to whatever weight you have selected so if I have mix set to weight one it's gonna try and get to a weight of one if I have mix with a weight of 0.5 it's gonna try and get to a weight of 0.5 and I have and if I have mix set to zero, it's going to try to get to a weight of zero. You can weight paint perfectly fine with just the mix brush, and that's what I use most of the time. However, there are two other blend modes um, that I recommend you use as well. Uh, so that would be add. So what that does is it can only make weight stronger. If I set this to 0.6, it's gonna add 0.6 to that. But you'll notice I can stack it. So it's no longer trying to stop at just 0.6. It's going to add 0.6 every single time. You also have subtract, which is going to take weights away by that same value. It's the opposite of the add blend mode. So now you know how to use all of the weight painting tools, but how do you actually weight paint different bones? The entire time I've been drawing around throughout the whole body, but I've actually only been weight painting to this selected bone right here. As you can see, if I draw down there and move this bone, that's not the result we want. So to pick where you're actually waiting to, you have two options. The first option is to just simply select the bone in the scene, and you can do that by doing Alt-Click if you're in Blender 4 or later. Um, if you're using another Blender version, you want to Control-Click the bone instead. But if you're in Blender 4 or later, that's Alt-Click, and you can click on different bones. The second option is just to go into that Object Data Properties tab under Vertex Groups and select the bone you want. You'll notice that when I click on different vertex groups, the bone selected in the scene doesn't change. That's because maybe I want to weight something to like the right shoulder, but I want to move the chest bone. So just keep that in mind. Uh, where you are, ha what you have selected in the scene may not always reflect what vertex group you're actually weight painting on. So in this last section, I'm just going to quickly cover a couple of tips or things that might help you uh, while you're doing this process. If you want to weight paint some areas but not touch other areas, you can use the masking functions. So you can use tab to go in between edit mode and weight paint mode. While we're in edit mode, we're going to select something that we want to mask off. So for example, this plate here on the arm. Go back into weight paint mode and then use the mask tool. And you'll notice everything is grayed out except for this area right here, meaning we can use something like a gradient tool and have it only affect this area. So you'll notice it's a perfect clean edge. I didn't accidentally weight more or less than I wanted to. While you have a mask active, you can also use weight, set weight, and it will fill the entire area with whatever weight value you have here. This is really useful for if you have like a prop that you're trying to weight. So for example, I want my glasses here to be 100% of the way weighted to the head. Like that. So something I stressed a lot at the beginning is weight painting works by matching the names of your vertex groups to your bones. This is really convenient if we accidentally paint on the wrong bone. For example, I've accidentally weighted my right foot to what looks like my right leg. As you can see, it's not moving as expected. In order to fix this, we can simply rename the vertex group to whichever bone it's supposed to actually follow. So since there's nothing on the actual right toe, I'm going to get rid of the right toe and then rename my mistake of right knee to right toe. And now you can see it moves as expected. Another thing that might happen when you're weight painting is you move some bones around to see how they look and then suddenly your pose is all out of whack. In order to fix this we're going to leave weight paint mode, go back to object mode, make sure we just have the armature selected, go into pose mode, hit A to select all bones, and then do pose clear transform all and it should reset it back to your default pose.
If you have a simple shape, you may be able to use automatic weight painting. We're going to parent the mesh to the armature in the same way that we did before. So mesh, armature, control P, and we're going to click with automatic weights. And then Blender is going to do its best to approximate how it thinks that this should be weighted. Keep in mind that this is not the best for more complicated meshes, but for simple meshes like straight lines, tubes, uh, tails, um, it should work great, as, especially as a starting point. The last weight painting thing I'm going to show you related to character rigging uh, is a really awesome add-on that will speed up your weight painting process. I just showed you uh, automatic weighting, and technically Blender has a way to transfer weights from one object to a similar object, but this tool does that much better. Sent from Space has created the Robust Weight Transfer, which is an add-on that lets you easily transfer weights from one mesh to another. So as you can see, my character here is all weight painted, but I want this little band-aid to be stuck to their arm. I could manually parent this to the armature and then wait, select the armature and select it and weight paint it, or I could just use this tool. I'm going to click on the object that I want to transfer weights to, and then I'm going to eye drop the source where I want to transfer weights from. So in this case, I want it to come from this arm right here, and simply click transfer weights. You'll get a little success dialog at the bottom that says the weight transfer was successful. However, if I select the armature and enter pose mode, you'll notice that it still doesn't move with the mesh. The last piece of the puzzle that we're missing is that this needs to have an armature modifier. So I'm going to click on it, click add modifier, search up armature, and simply I drop my armature. And now if I enter pose mode, you'll notice they all move together and the weights have been perfectly transferred. You can do this for much more complex pieces of geometry, like pants, t-shirts. Uh, you can even mask off uh, areas that you do or don't want to be um, transferred. But in its simplest form, it lets you do really awesome stuff like that, that just save you a couple of minutes of your time. The very last thing I'm going to go over is just some other uses for weight painting that aren't related to character rigging. You don't actually have to have an armature at all in order to weight paint or have vertex groups and vertex data. For example, I could very easily just take this sphere, go over to my object data properties, and create a new vertex group, and then start weight painting from there. I can have as many groups as I want on the object, and then just click between them to see what they look like. So why is this useful? Why would I want to have weight painting on any random object? Well, I already mentioned with robust weight transfer, you could use this as a mask, or you can use it in some modifiers. Displacement modifier, cloth modifier, simple deform modifier, all kinds of different modifiers let you use as a mask. So as you can see, I've added a little displacement modifier, and I've set the mask to the vertex group that we just created. Here's what it looks like with the other one. I also put some examples of how to use it with the wave modifier, cloth modifier, or some others on the screen right now. I'll let them play for a little bit. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. It ended up being a little bit more in depth than I anticipated, but hopefully it serves as a good overview for people who want to get into rigging their own characters, adding accessories, swapping out clothes, whatever. I hope you found it helpful. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. And uh, if I decide that I like making tutorials like this, I may come back and make some more. So let me know your thoughts. Oh, and of course I've got to promote the whole like, look at my store, look at all my stuff thing. So if you like the like this stuff, you should, yeah, you should check it out. Thanks.